Hi, this is Nathan Waldorf and Becca Clements. Um, we would love to help you find your next home and are going to tell you how the process works. Uh, really, your first step is going to be to find a realtor. Uh, you want somebody who represents you because the person with the sign in the yard of the, the house for sale, they represent the seller and they don't represent you and you need somebody to look out for your best interests. So once you found a realtor you like, you want to get pre-approved for a loan. So that way you know how much you can spend on a home and that you aren't spending more than one-third of your income per month. And um, if you need a list of good lenders, we've, we've got one. Be happy to send it to you. Uh, next thing you're going to do is pick out the area where you want to live. You want to be thinking about safety, uh, schools, even if you're not going to have kids or don't have kids. It sure helps with your resale value if your home is owned for good schools. And, you know, is it a busy road, location, uh, to have traffic noise or whatever. Now once you've figured out the area, you want to think about the house itself. How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms do you need, what kind of square footage. Again, kind of think about resale. Three bedrooms sell better than two bedroom homes. And communicate everything that you want in your home to your realtor and, uh, uh, and then we'll start sending you homes via email that are in that area in your price range. Um, and you just need to look through those homes and, and pick one out or pick some out and we'll be happy to show them to you. Now once you've picked out your home and you've decided the one you want to make an offer on, come and meet with your, uh, your realtor with your pre-approval letter in your hand that way once your offer is accepted we can send that on over to the sellers. Um, you have a couple of things you have to do right after your offer is accepted. Um, you'll have a home inspection will your realtor will give you a um, a list of good home inspectors and you can choose from one of those um, let's see you'll also need to sign documents with the lender kind of right away documents that hire that lender uh, give them permission to work for you um, so they're not being pushy if they're asking for it they just need it to get the process going uh, you'll also want to shop for homeowners insurance you want to go ahead and pick that out and uh, give all that information to your lender. Once you get your home inspection done, the home inspector is hired to find everything wrong with the home, probably more than you ever want to know. So it's worth going over it with your realtor and letting them help you with the home inspection process so they can help you learn what is items that need to be focused on, major issues like roof or foundational issues, and kind of overlook things that aren't worth negotiating. Um. The buyer also ordered the termite inspection. Uh, we'll help you with that and help you with, with who to call on that. And uh, we'll send out a termite inspector. If termites are found, it's, a lot of times it's an easy just spray and treat the termites. Uh, if they are, as long as, say, the termites haven't, you know, eaten through something structural or something like that, which is typically, which doesn't happen that often. Um, once you're, all that is done, your lender will also send out an appraiser. You don't really need to handle that. You may need to pay for it before they send out the appraiser, but often they're just looking to make sure that your home is, what you're paying for it is not greater than the value of the house. So some appraisers will also have repairs required, like FHA or VA loans, so that's something to be aware of as well. It really, according to the new new documents, uh, the new closing procedures, you'll actually have to have paid for that appraisal before 14 days have passed from the time the, uh, your contract was accepted. So the lender is going to ask you for all sorts of things throughout this process, and it's, it is what it is. It's pretty normal. Um, so, you know, when they ask you for papers, copies of bank statements, copies of investment statements, Anything like that, you need to get it to them as fast as you can uh, in order not to create long delays. Because you want to get in your house, you know, when you're planning on, and honestly, the seller wants to sell it, <laughs> you know, and that agreed upon time as well. All right, so after all that's done, the day before closing, you'll go out there with your, your realtor and make sure that the home is not in a worse condition than it was when you made the offer. If there were repairs done, you'll make sure that those repairs were done and done correctly. And then you'll be good to go and head over to closing. Yeah. Um, about three days before closing, you're going to get something called the closing disclosure that tells you how much money you need to have and everything at closing. Your lender's going to need you to e-sign or do something, maybe even 
sign on paper, something that shows that that was delivered three days ahead of time. So when you get that thing, open it right away um, so you can prove that. That form, on the, on the bottom of that form, it's going to tell you exactly how much money you have to bring to closing. So you've got to, you're going to have to go to your bank ahead of time, get a cashier's check, and bring a cashier's check. You also need to bring your driver's license so that they can <laughs> verify who you are when you're signing. Uh, from there, we just sit at the closing table. Um, you're gonna and you'll sign documents, uh, pretty normal documents that all lenders have, and and then you get the keys and it's your home. <laughs> so we love to help you with that. Um, so give us a call or shoot us an email. Uh, our office number is four two three seven five six. 2400. So ask for Nathan or Becca and we'd be happy to help.